Hi there, I'm Jeremy Krug, and we're continuing with Unit 3, Section 4, the last video in this section, actually, as we talk about the partial pressure of a gas. Now, let's imagine that we have a gas container that looks something like this, and this gas container has a whopping 10 molecules of gas in there. So you can see the 10 molecules, and three of those molecules are blue triangle molecules, we'll call them. And then seven of those molecules are red X's, as you can see in the container. Now, if I were to ask you, what percentage of the pressure is due to the red X molecules? Well, I think you would be able to say that it's 70%, right? Because seven out of the 10 molecules in that container are red X's. And likewise, if I were to ask you what percentage of the pressure in that container is due to the blue triangle molecules, well, once again, it would be 3 out of the total 10, which is 30%. This is telling us how we determine the partial pressure of a gas. This is the premise behind Dalton's law of partial pressures. Now, Dalton's law of partial pressures basically tells us that the partial pressure of a gas is equal to the fraction, the mole fraction, that that gas is taking up in the container multiplied by the total pressure. So partial pressure is the pressure that a certain gas is responsible for. The X that we have written here is the mole fraction, or the, the fraction that that gas is occupying out of the total. And the P total just represents the, uh, the total pressure in the container. So we're going to use this equation, Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures, to determine uh, the, the partial pressures of some different uh, gas containers or different gases in a mixture. So let's take a look at the first example. Now here it says a flask has a total pressure of 1.25 atmospheres. If the flask contains 7.2 moles of water vapor and 12.9 moles of carbon dioxide gas, then what is the partial pressure of A, water vapor, and B, carbon dioxide? Let's do part A first. Now, what I recommend that you do, this is something that helps me, I like to draw a diagram of what's going on here. So I'm just going to draw a little diagram or bring this up here. And this is a very simple diagram. I just have written that there are 7.2 moles of water in here and 12.9 moles of carbon dioxide gas. And there's a little pressure gauge on there I've just uh, drawn in that has 1.25 atmospheres as the total pressure. So we're trying to solve for the partial pressure of water here in this first part, in part A. So let's find the the mole fraction that water is taking up. Now, notice it's 7.2 moles of water out of how many total? How do we get that? Well, we have to add these two values together. 7.2 plus 12.9, that gets us 20.1 total moles. It's like in that other example with the x's and the triangles. We had seven X's and we had three triangles, what was the total that we divided by to get that, that, that fraction? We divided by the 10, right? That was the total. So we have to add them up. Same thing here. D divide it out. And now we multiply this by the total pressure, which is 1.25 atmospheres. So when you divide the fraction, 7.2 divided by 20.1, uh, 20 and then times by 1.25 atmospheres, the answer that hopefully you get on your calculator, and I double check, is about 0.448 atmospheres. Hopefully that's what you're able to get. Now, let's try the other one, carbon dioxide. It's done the same way. We take the fraction that the carbon dioxide is responsible for. This time, it's not 7.2, it's 12.9 moles divided by the total. That total is still 20.1. The sum of those two mole values is still the same. And then we multiply it by the total pressure in the container, which is still 1.25 atmospheres. And we key this into our calculator. And when you take 12.9 divided by 12.1 times 1.25, 
check this on your calculator, it should be about 0 0.802 atmospheres. Now, a way to check our work is to make sure that the two partial pressures of these components add up to give us the total pressure in the container. And so is that the case? If you take the 0.448 atmospheres and add that to 0 0.802 atmospheres, does that give you the total pressure in the container? It does, doesn't it? So that's the way we can check our work. The total pressure should always be equal to the sum of the individual partial pressures. In this case, we only have two gases. Other gas mixtures might have three or four or, or who knows how many. Now, let's take a look at another example. In this case, we have a gas chamber that has a total pressure of 1.800 atmospheres. If 10.00 grams of oxygen gas, O2, and 10.00 grams of nitrous oxide, N2O, are present in the chamber, what will be the partial pressure of A, oxygen, and B, nitrous oxide? So once again, I'm going to draw a little uh, a picture that kind of reflects what's going on here. We have 10.00 grams of oxygen and 10.00 grams of N2O. And there's a little uh, pressure gauge, 1.800 atmospheres. And this is just to help us uh, visualize what's going on here. But do you notice something different about this? It doesn't have moles, or does it? It tells us grams. Give us grams. Can we work the problem in grams? Well, no. There's no such thing as a gram fraction that we can work with here. It has to be a mole fraction. So the first thing we have to do before we can do anything in this problem is convert those two values to moles. So we can have a mole fraction. So that's a little extra work. So off to the side, we're going to have to convert these. So let's just go ahead and do that. 10 grams of oxygen, and we have to convert that to moles. So grams on the bottom, one mole on the top. And once again, you can look at your periodic table and see that it's going to be about 32 grams in a mole of that. And when you divide it, it's 0.3125 moles of oxygen. And we're going to do the same thing for the nitrous oxide. 10.00 grams of N2O and grams on the bottom, one mole on top to convert that to moles. And when you add up the, the molar mass of two nitrogens and an oxygen, you should get an answer of about 44.01 grams in a mole of that compound, somewhere very close to that. So grams are out. And when you divide this, I'm getting a value of about 0.2272 moles of N2O. So make sure that that's the answer that you're getting for moles as well, or something very close to that. Now, once we have the mole values, we are ready to start our calculating. So let's do part A and find the partial pressure of oxygen. So for oxygen, it's the mole fraction of oxygen. So that's however many moles of oxygen there are, 0.3125, divided by the total moles. And how do we get the total moles again? Well, we have to add these two numbers together. So 0.3125 plus 0.2272 gets us 0.5397 total moles. That's our, this is our mole fraction. Now we can multiply the mole fraction by the total pressure in the container, which is about 1.800 atmospheres. So when I multiply that out, I get an answer of 1.042 atmosphere. So that's the partial pressure of the oxygen. Now let's do the nitrous oxide. It's done the same way. We take the mole fraction of the nitrous oxide, so that's however many moles of that we have, 0.2272, divided by the total moles in the container. We just added that up a minute ago. That number hasn't changed. It's 0.5397 total moles, and we multiply that by the total pressure in the container, which is still 1.800 atmospheres. And when you do that math, you get an answer of about 0.758 atmospheres. And so there we have our two partial pressures in this container. Now let's check our work.
Because if we did this correctly, the two partial pressures should add up to give us the total pressure. Is that the case? Is 1.042 plus 0.758 equal to 1.800 atmospheres? It certainly is. So that tells us that we probably did this problem right. Now let's do one more problem. And here we have a laboratory problem. Here we have a chemistry student who has collected 0.1395 grams of gas over water in an experiment. The student runs the experiment at 25 degrees Celsius and 50.00 milliliters of gas are collected. Today's atmospheric pressure is precisely 756.0 millimeters of mercury. The vapor pressure of water at 25 degrees Celsius is 24.0 millimeters of mercury. And we have three parts to the question. So the first question says, calculate the partial pressure of the gas in atmospheres. Now in the other problems, we were expected to use the mole values and have a, a mole fraction. We're not given anything with moles here, so we can't do that. What we're going to have to, to do here is think about this in terms of the two gases that are present, and they're going to add up to give us the total pressure. So there are two components. Whenever you collect a gas over water, what you're collecting in that container is gas, but you're also collecting some water vapor because water is always evaporating. So our total pressure will be the partial pressure of the gas that we're trying to collect plus the partial pressure of the water vapor. So this is actually a gas mixture. So it says the total pressure, today's atmospheric pressure, that's the total pressure, is 756. So I'm going to put that in as my total pressure. I'm trying to find the partial pressure of the gas. So that's, that's my unknown. And the partial pressure of the water vapor is actually given to us in this little nugget of the problem right here. That's the vapor pressure. So I plug in the 24 millimeters of mercury, and when I subtract, I'll find out the partial pressure of the gas that I'm actually trying to analyze. So that's going to end up being about 732 millimeters of mercury. So that's my answer, but I have to be very careful here because that's not what the question was asking for. It says in atmospheres. So I have to go a little bit further here and convert this to atmospheres. So in my conversion factor, when I convert millimeters of mercury to atmospheres, there are one, there is one atmosphere equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Now if you don't know that or you've known that and you've forgotten it, don't worry because that piece of information, that conversion factor, is given to you in the equation packet on the AP exam. So you don't have to memorize that. If you know that number, that's great. But if you don't, that's okay. So when you divide 732 divided by 760, your answer is about 0.963 atmospheres. So that's the answer to part A. That's the actual partial pressure of the gas that we're trying to analyze. Now let's go on to part B. Determine the number of the moles of gas collected. So the way we do this is using the ideal gas law. Now we've done several ideal gas law problems already. PV equals nRT. We're just going to have to plug and chug here. Now P, the pressure of the gas, well, we just calculated that. That was the 0.963 atmosphere. So that's going to go in there. Now V is for volume. Do we see how many, vo um, how many liters of gas we collected? Well, it was 50 milliliters. So we have to convert that to liters. So that's 0.05 liters. I hopefully have the right number of sig figs on that. Now it's equal to n, the number of moles. Well, we're solving for the number of moles, so we're going to have that as our unknown. Now r is the gas constant. That's 0.0821. And then t is for temperature. And the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature at which we ran the experiment. So i got to change that to kelvins. That's 298 kelvins. So we have all the nuggets of information 
that we got right out of the problem, and in one case, out of part A. Now we just have to solve for this. So I'm going to multiply these out, divide, and hopefully you get the same answer I do as about 0 0.001968 moles. So that's a very small number, but that seems to be the right answer. Now part C says calculate the molar mass of the gas in grams per mole. Now for a lot of students this is a tough one because grams per mole, what does that mean? Well, the key actually lies in the unit right here. Grams per mole. That means grams divided by moles. The per actually means divide by. So if I have the grams of gas, and I actually do, it says right here it's 0.1395 grams of gas. So that's how many grams. How many moles of gas? Well, I just calculated that in part B. So that's the number of moles. So when I take the number of grams divided by the number of moles, I'm going to get the molar mass in grams per mole. And that turns out to be about 70.9 grams per mole. And so that's the answer. Now, if the question were to ask identify the gas, we could try to, to find a, a gas that has that uh, that molar mass, I would take a guess and say it's probably chlorine gas, Cl2, because that's a gas that has a, a molar mass very close to that. So here we've done several examples with Dalton's Law of Partial Pressures. Hope you've learned something. If you have, please hit that thumbs up button. We're going to head right on in the next video to Unit 3, Section 5, where we're going to learn a little bit more about the motion of gas molecules. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.